They say that revenge is a dish that's best served cold, and by that they likely meant to be as cold as ice in regards to the person doing the revenge plot. After all, when you want revenge, well, true revenge, the kind that television shows and movies and even comic books are made of, you want it to be as dark and striking as possible. Not speaking from personal experience or anything here. And when it comes to getting revenge against a former boss that pushed you too far, you want to get even in the best of ways. So from smashing a Mercedes to literally hacking the system, and more, here are 20 workers who got revenge on their boss. Number 20. Car Smash Now I'll be honest here, some of us would love to go full psycho killer on our bosses who have made us suffer mentally. It's just not practical for a whole lot of people. At other times though, you don't want to overthink what to do to them when the time comes. Take for example this video of a very disgruntled employee who apparently wasn't getting the pay that he thought he was due by his boss. So instead of continuing to whine about it, he grabbed the construction vehicle that he was working with and used used it to completely demolish the Mercedes that his boss owned. All the while getting it captured on camera as a co-worker was getting interviewed at the time. There are a lot of things that make this particular revenge scheme so satisfying, not the least of which is that at the beginning, the tire of the machine is so big that it actually can't crush the car, so you think that it will only have minor damage. That is until they bring the scoop down and smash the car in enough so that it can drive over it. How classic. Some would argue that this wasn't exactly the smartest of plans because they were caught on camera and it would be very easy to find out who was driving it at the time, but please suspend your disbelief and don't ruin the moment. This is not something that you see every day, and if an employee was willing to do that to their employer in broad daylight, that boss must have been a real jerk. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Hacked. So the last entry was very much a piece of physical revenge, i.e. making the employer lose something that they could physically touch, but another way to get revenge is known as twisting the knife, aka making them suffer in such a way that's much more than physical. A perfect example of this came in 2016 when a former employer of the hotel chain Marriott decided to get revenge on the chain that fired him. He could have damaged the hotel physically, but that would have been risky. He could have hurt other people instead of just his bosses. So instead, he put his brain to work and he hacked into the Marriott systems. What did he do in there? Did he expose dirty little secrets? Did he record them doing things and use it for blackmail? Well, no, he did something even more devious, lowering the prices of the hotel rooms. Now that may not sound so menacing, but these guys get paid based on the success of the hotel, and the drop that he did wasn't exactly small. He lowered the prices from $150 to $400 to make the rooms no more than $50, and some were even going for $19. Now, unfortunately, the man wasn't exactly smart enough to modify his IP address, and as a result, he would be arrested and charged with three felonies. So you could argue that the employer got the last laugh. However, by the time that this hack was done, that Marriott lost over $50,000 in revenue. That's not exactly chump change. What's more, it also showcased just how vulnerable the systems were, something they definitely wouldn't want people to know about. Number 18. Key to Victory 
Next up, we have a case of what we'd call petty revenge. What's the difference between this and the last two? Well, it is a kind of revenge, but it's so lowbrow that it honestly comes off as childish and isn't really the best way to strike fear into those who have oppressed you. Not that I've done that on the regular. <laughs> no, definitely not. Anyways, this is the tale of Nicholas Thomas, who had worked at and was fired from a Midas auto shop. He didn't like that he was fired, so he came up with a petty revenge scheme. He went and returned to work to get his personal belongings, which is a perfectly reasonable excuse to get into the building, and then he thought no one was looking and went to his boss's car and keyed it up. Now remember, the first entry was a guy straight up totaling the car with heavy machinery. That's definitive. But keying up a car, and not so much. Now, to be fair, that keying was apparently substantial enough to warrant $4,000 worth of repairs, which is a big amount, but there were two problems. One, despite him being sly about it, he was seen doing it by multiple employees, and any one of them could have ratted him out. Then, the whole thing was also caught on camera. He should have remembered that the cameras were there from when he worked at the place. So not only was he caught red handed, he was also charged for a crime, and his former boss was going to make sure that rain or shine he paid for the damages. And frankly, if you're going to do that bad at getting revenge, you deserve to pay the price. Number 17. Total Annihilation Now I'll be honest, I'm not really sure if this video is revenge for a few basic reasons, but let's just pretend for a moment that it is, because there's some really cool stuff going on. First and foremost, we have an employee who decides to destroy his employer's car, and he apparently has the perfect machine to do it. Look at this beautiful piece of machinery. The thing was built to do one thing, and that's wreck stuff in style. Oh, and it's glorious to see it wreck that car with ease. The best part, though, is it's not alone. There's a second machine with a different set of tools, if you will, and the two machines tag team in order to straight up rip the car in half. Any hope of saving that vehicle is knocked down in seconds flat, and we could watch that clip all day long. Now, why do I have such a hard time believing that this was some employees destroying their boss's car? Well, first and foremost, because my pet guinea pig Twinkle's very smart and she told me so. But secondly, look at those machines. What job do you know of that has machines like that? They're very specialized. And while they do destroy the car quite well, it's not exactly something that screams, this is my work vehicle and now I'm turning it against my employer. The first one did that but that was more of a standard. Third, there were two machines that were wrecking the car, and you're telling me that there were two ex-employees that had the guts to do that with work equipment? Finally, just look at the car. Does it look like the car of an employer? No, I don't exactly think so. Number 16. The Day Off now, sometimes you don't want to wait until things go wrong to get a little bit of revenge. Sometimes you want to get it in when the opportunity perfectly presents itself. And that's what this video is about right here. Because some work employees banded together in such a real way to prank their boss, just to have a little bit of fun, because typically the employees go and park in the company parking lot, right? That way they can get right to work. However, this time, they all decided to park behind the building where their boss couldn't see them, so that when he came into work to the parking lot, he was the only one there. That's ready, right? And they go, all right. <laughs> You can see the confusion that he has when he does a drive-by before finally parking, and when he gets out, the smile on his face shows that he knew that something was up, but didn't exactly know what it was until he went inside and was surprised by his employees. He took it pretty well, admitting that it was a funny prank, and that's exactly what it was. Though I doubt that they'll actually try that again, given that he's now on to their unity, if you will. And this here is an almost perfect prank. They got everyone on board to make it happen. The setup was perfect. The only thing that was missing was a true payoff. That boss was so savvy that he knew that something was off, he just couldn't tell what it was. And if they had a guy who gave a wild reaction, that would have been oh so delicious to watch. 
Number 15. Computer Virus Now, this is awesome in all the right and wrong ways. We've all had bosses that we have felt that have ridden us too hard. We've had some ourselves, I promise you. But how you react to that situation is what separates you from a person that's going to get in trouble and one that can get revenge later on if you play it right. Which brings me to this lady, who is called into her boss's office and told that she's getting a reprimand because she's had some low sales. Now, that's a legit legitimate thing to gripe about, depending on the field that you're in, so he gives her the reprimand and then he leaves. That was his first mistake, because he just left a woman, with whom he didn't know the emotional state of, in a room alone and thinks that she's not going to do anything, but oh yes, she did do something. To the point where she actually goes to his desk and wrecks just about everything that she can, including his computer, before eventually sitting down as if nothing happened. When he returns, he notices that something most definitely has happened and asks a very fair WTF, to which she replies oh so beautifully, computer virus? Now that's a good one, which I'll have to remember. Of course, the joke is on her because she was caught on camera destroying the man's office, but for those few moments and that great backhand, she definitely got her revenge and definitely got fired. Number 14. A Cole D Response For any reasonable person, Yes, I said reasonable, even given the context of the video I'm doing. There are a few things that can easily set you off on the job. The first is personal insults by someone to you. The second is having your dignity or work ethic questioned. And the third is the biggest, getting your pay withheld. For many people around the world, they're living paycheck to paycheck, so someone not getting their money on time, or for even a few days after they should, can be disastrous. And when you withhold pay, they don't take it very well. Such as with this coal miner in Turkey, he found out that his employer had been withholding his pay and he decided that he was going to do something about it. But what did he do? Did he go up to his boss and demand his pay? Did he go over the man's head to try and get his superiors on him? Well, no, he did the one thing that he knew he could do without issue. He went to his coal digger and proceeded to destroy all sorts of vehicles that the company had. The best part, arguably, is that he had a crowd gathered as they watched on in shock because he did it over and over and over again. Eventually, he was calmed down and went out to the vehicle on his own terms, but wow, that must have been a sight. Oh, and did I mention that the boss was this man's uncle? That's going to be an awkward talk during the holidays. Number 13. Have a seat. To exact the perfect revenge on your boss, you need to know not just his weaknesses in terms of what he owns, like a car or something valuable, but also how you can use his own mind and sometimes body against him so that it seems like they did something wrong and not you. Case in point, this video of some employees getting revenge against their boss in a way that's both cruel, unusual, and yet ultimately perfect. But how's that? What? Well, apparently their boss was very heavy set to the extent that he would continuously break office chairs, the fancy leather reclining kind, just by sitting in them too much. They decided to get revenge by speeding up the process and loosening up one of the chairs that he sat in so that it wouldn't work properly. And surely enough, he came in, barked out his orders, and sat down in his chair. Nothing happens at first, but that's really the point because he takes a call, leans back, and splat. In judo, you would be referred to as using your opponent's own momentum against them, and as you can see, it's quite an effective move. The best part here is that if they played it right, they wouldn't have gotten caught, because for all that boss knew, the chair was either defective or had been assembled incorrectly. Maximum effect, leaving minimal trace of your hands, it's the perfect revenge. Number 12. Range Rover vs. Excavator 
As you are seeing by now, there's a bit of a trend going on with not only destroying your boss's car, but destroying it using the heavy machinery that you happen to have in use at your former day job. In this case, a man was disgruntled at his boss and decides to use the excavator that he totally still has access to and destroy the boss's work vehicle. But not just any vehicle, a Range Rover that was apparently worth almost $100,000. Yes, that's an expensive car, and this guy went to town on it to get his revenge as others watched on in horror. Or at least that's what they did until they ganged up on the guy in the cabin and forced him out in order to try and stop him from doing any more damage. Now it's easy to think that this is entirely the employee's fault for going on a rampage, but there is a bit of a catch. You see, he was sent home for the day by his boss for apparently being under the influence, and he expected the man to go off on his own accord. If he's under the influence, what makes you think he's going to do what you say? Especially if he's heavily under the influence. That boss should have escorted him off the property or called a ride for him if he felt that he couldn't drive himself home. Home, but instead, he just let him walk, and ultimately, you can see what happened in the end. Number 11. Chainsaw Men Remember when I told you that there are certain things that can set off reasonable people? Well, one of those triggers once again came into play in Australia in the form of a set of unpaid workers. This time, though, they were home builders, and they had a very unique message to give to their bosses. Specifically, they went to a house that I can only assume was the one they hadn't been paid for, and then they used some chainsaws to straight up wreck the foundations of the place, basically undermining all of of the work that had been done and mostly paid for beforehand. As if to punctuate the video they made as said message was the caption, we'll learn the hard way. It's not exactly the most intimidating message ever, but we never said the guys were geniuses either. So where do I fall on this particular revenge plot? Well, it is kind of tricky. On one hand, yes, they definitely got their revenge for their late payment, but they were also very sloppy on the way that they handled it and themselves. They literally videotaped themselves doing it and then uploaded it to the internet, meaning that it could be turned into evidence that could be used against them in court. What's more, while it is very fair to be mad about late pay, now they're going to get no pay at all ever, and just as importantly, any construction job they could have gotten in the future is going to have this event hanging over their heads. It's perfect revenge that requires maximum effectiveness and not getting in any major trouble. They did well on the first part, but unfortunately for them, they failed on the second. Number 10. Bye Bye Lodge Oh look, another worker that wasn't paid on time. I wonder what he's going to do to get his revenge. Well, there's a plot twist. He didn't go and destroy his boss's car. Rather, much like the last entry, he was stiffed on pay, over $600 worth, and decided to take it out on the building that his company had just finished doing. He got a miniature excavator and literally barreled it into the place, wrecking it from the inside out. Needless to say, his fellow workers were not only miffed at what was going on, they were also trying to figure out why he was destroying their work. Eventually, they banded together to try and stop him from further destruction of the place, but it wasn't easy given the vehicle that he was in. However, they did eventually pull him out, and he was taken away. This was definitely a case of spur-of-the-moment revenge, and you have to admire his dedication to burrow through the place without a care in the world, and he even took the excavator down a flight of stairs without skipping a beat. Now sure, it was very obvious what he did, but at that moment in time, I'm sure that he felt really good about it, or at the very least, content with the wish that he had done more to his boss. Number 9. Perfect Timing Boss 
Want another example of spur of the moment revenge, but with a delicious twist? Well, head to this particular construction site where a boss brings his car into the field of play, if you will, and then proceeds to begin yelling at two of his workers. One is in an excavator and one's in a rock truck. Now you can't really tell what he's saying, but what you can tell is that he's miffed about something, and then all too quickly, the worker decides he has had it. At first, he swipes at the boss with the bucket of the excavator, which honestly looks pretty menacing, even from our viewpoint, and then the excavator worker decides to go full tilt, crushing his boss's car right in front of him, who has the most beautiful of reactions as he witnesses his car become literal scrap metal. And to top it all off, the excavator driver put the now flattened car in the rock truck. It may have been spur of the moment, but this is almost perfect revenge through and through, because he got to make his boss suffer, and he got to see his boss react to what he had done. Number 8. Worst Builder Ever the next story takes us to the UK, specifically to Stonygate, Leicester, where a man had bought a house and asked for some help from a builder in order to make it bigger. He wanted to put on an extension so that when it was finished, it could fit the man's family of six. A reasonable request, really. The problem was that it was agreed upon by the world's worst builder. And I say that because while the homeowner, the one who was paying for the work, was on holiday, the builder called him and asked for more money for the work that they were doing. The homeowner refused, partially because he was on holiday and couldn't send it, and so the builder went postal. Specifically, he had his crew destroy all of the work that they had done, removing all the scaffolding that they had set up to finish the house, and then left the whole place a bloody mess for the homeowner to return to. Adding to the turmoil and the revenge was that apparently this wasn't a criminal offense, but a dispute between an employer and a worker. How that's logical makes no sense, but if that builder got away with this, that there is the perfect revenge. Number 7. Watch Your Mouth now, while I don't have any sound here, what I definitely can tell in the case is that the worker was right, because as you can tell by body language and the actions of the boss, he was treating his female employee like dirt, which sadly is something that happens way too often in our world today. At first, you can see that she handles it like she's expected to, even when it's clear that she should fight back, even picking up the papers that he forcibly drops and made her get. But then, as she's walking down the hallway, she realizes that she doesn't really deserve any of this and gets in the man's face and wrecks his desk. <laughs> You can tell that he's shocked by what happened, as he didn't expect her to A, come back, and B, do what she did. So allow this to be a lesson to all of you managers out there. It's fine to be upset with an employee if they did something wrong, but treat them with respect as you instruct them on how to do better, or perhaps you'll face the consequences. Number 6. Contract Killing now, as I showed you a few entries ago, when you're hired to do a job for a person, you expect to be paid for your work, and that's all good and fine. But there's a line here that needs to be respected, and this contractor clearly didn't do that in a various amount of ways. First and foremost, he did something wrong because he got fired from working on a house. The problem for the homeowners was that he still had his construction vehicle nearby and promptly rammed it into the house, destroying a good chunk of it. For some reason, people thought that it was a good idea to try and get in front of the vehicle, which was not smart at all, but it did deter him eventually, so well done, I suppose. Regardless, that's not how those people expected the firing to go, and we bet that it's hard for that contractor to get any more work again in that town. What's his tagline going to be? Either I build your house or I destroy it? Number 5. Data Wipe You'd think that in this computer age that we live in right now, that people would be smart enough to realize that if they fire the wrong person without any safeguards, bad things are going to happen. 
Meet Juliana Barreal, a woman who used to work at a credit union and then got fired. Her response to getting fired, though? Well, she hacked into the computer systems of her former job, wiping out 20 gigs of data from their system. Now, trust me, that is a lot, and if it was in the right systems, potentially devastating to both the business and their users. Specifically, though, she deleted more than 20,000 files and almost 3,500 directories, and it took them about $10,000 to get all that data back. Some of the stuff that she deleted hurt a lot of customers, especially in the load field. She was caught for this hack and faced 10 years in jail for the crime. Number 4. Tractor Trader this is actually similar to a video that we did earlier about a person wrecking a hotel lobby, except in this one we have much more details about what we can see as far as the incredible destruction that took place with this tractor trailer. There are apparently multiple angles of this, and all of it just shows the same thing, anger and frustration being taken out. All because he wasn't paid his money. Oh, and the guy actually had a GoFundMe started up to make sure that he got the money that was owed to him, and they paid him thousands. Number 3. One Hot Hummer now, if you're going to get revenge, sometimes you just want to go big, such as with this guy who decided to destroy his boss's Hummer, uh, which I sympathize with. Who wouldn't want to rid the world of Hummers? Anyways, instead of wrecking it with a car or another vehicle, he actually lit it on fire. And not just a small flame to make a point, he straight up went to a towering inferno on that thing, and you almost have to wonder if the man himself got incinerated because he's there one minute and then he's gone the next. It would take a while to get that fire out. Some people just want to watch Hummers burn in the end. Number 2. Cliffhanger now, we know what happens at the edge of this cliff, and it's a boss's car that gets dropped into a pit of a construction area, and as you watch the video, you almost have to wonder what's in the bed of that rock truck. Then you see something white, and you wonder, is that paint? But no, it's a car. The boss's car. And he wanted to make sure that it was not only trashed, but also unable to be recovered, so he dropped it down into a pit so that it would be even further hurt. That's doing the deed and ensuring the follow through, which is classic. Number 1. Conan Dissing Jay Leno now finally, who says that celebrities can't get revenge on their employers? Conan O'Brien was the heir apparent for when Jay Leno left The Tonight Show. Sure enough, Jay went on to do The Jay Leno Show, and Conan took the seat. Well, for a brief period of time. I have no idea what the conversation would be. The Jay Leno Show would bomb in the ratings, and he wanted his old time slot back. But Conan was owed, and so something had to give. The result? Conan's contract was being bought out, and he couldn't host for a set period of time, which he happily took and then went on to TBS, where he had a hit show that only recently ended. But what's the revenge in all of this, you may ask? Well, before he signed off on The Tonight Show, he made sure to stick it to the man and the company that broke their word. So he said, remember ladies and gentlemen, you can do anything you want to do unless Jay Leno wants to do it also. Good night everybody! That's all from the realm of people who went really far to get their beautiful and hopefully satisfying revenge. What did you think of these plots by employees against their former employers? And which of these schemes shocked you the most and how it was done? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.